Today we're going to talk about work surfaces. Work surfaces are the cornerstone of any ESD control program, but there are two parts to pay attention to, a product qualification part and a compliance verification part. We're going to quickly go through with measurements that are required for both. Now in a product qualification, we should be in an environment that's 23 degrees C and 12% relative humidity. We don't have that today, but you need an environmental chamber. First thing you want to do is to make sure your instrumentation is working correctly. So I'm going to take these two five pound probes and we're going to test them with this meter to see how high we can. This is an insulative surface. So we're going to test this insulative surface. Now this meter automatically switches between 10 and 100 volts, which at 10 to the 6 ohms below you do 10, 10 to the 6 above you do 100. And as you can see, we're well in 10 to the 12th ohms. The requirement in 2020 is less than 10 to the 9th, so we absolutely can ma make these measurements. One of the other measurements we want to make sure, though, is to make sure that the system is connected. So we put it on two metal plates, and you can see we're about 1,000 ohms. So we are definitely well within the range of being able to measure 2020. Okay, just a quick explanation of what we're trying to do when we're measuring the, on an insulated surface and we're trying to measure on stainless steel. According to the standard, and this is the work surfaces standards, we have to have a meter that's capable of measuring up to 10 to the 10th, which is what we have. So we've demonstrated that we have a measurement of 10 to the 10th. 10 to the 11th is much higher. It's fine. It also states that we need to have the two probes on a stainless steel plate measure less than 1,000 ohms. This didn't quite make it. But in this case, what we're trying to do is to ensure that the lower end, what we can measure. We're going to be measuring some static dissipated mats, so they're going to be much higher than 1,000 ohms. So even though we don't quite meet the standard, it still is going to give us a valid test. Uh, the last thing that you need to notice is when I made the measurement on stainless steel plate, the probes were not touching one another. And the reason it looks like it is because of the fact they're black. I was wearing very dark slacks, and I was standing behind it. But when you make the measurement on the stainless steel plate, ensure that the probes are separated and not touching one another so it doesn't enter into the measurement technique. And now we'll go back to the video. So the first measurement that we're going to make is point to groundable point. So in this case, we only need one probe. And I'm hooking up to the groundable point, And we're going to make our first measurement. We're just over 10 to the 6th. That's a good measurement. Then you go to each corner. Again, we're 10 to the 6th, very consistent. Far corner. Last corner. and then the middle. So our readings are very consistent. Remember the best you can do in this measurement is about a half order of magnitude. So I don't really look at the at the, this part. To, I'm really looking at 10 to the 6. All the measurements are within 10 to the 6. Once we've done our, our point to groundable point, we do our point to point measurements. And there's four quick measurements we're going to make. We use both probes in this case. Point to point this way. And don't be surprised if the reading is a little bit higher doing point to point than point to groundable point since I have to go through the surface twice. Point to point this way. And then we do corner to corner, this corner to this corner. And then this corner to this corner. Now 
And this particular work surface shows that point to groundable point measurements are 10 to the sixth. Point to point measurements tend to be 10 to the seventh. Very consistent and well within the spec of 2020. So we've completed all the product qualification measurements. So the next thing we want to do is demonstrate compliance verification. Product qualification is done before you even purchase it. This is something you should do and record. Compliance verification is what you're going to be doing your day-to-day -day measurements on. And it's much simpler measurement. Now, the setup I have here, you notice I've changed the meter. This meter is used for that I use for compliance verification. It's not as expensive as my laboratory meter, and it makes the measurements that I need to make, and I can give this to a technician. It's also very simple to use. So what I want to do first is make sure I can measure above 10 to the ninth. So I have an insulator on here. And to make sure we can do it, and as you can see, we're 10 to the 11th. Or well above. So we know that this meter is capable of measuring up to at least 10 to the ninth with reliable measurement. So what we want to do now is to measure compliance verification. And in this case, compliance verification is one simple measurement. The mat now is connected to my grounding system. This other lead goes to ground. So we're checking through the grounding system through the mat. So this makes a complete system check. And this is the only measurement I need to make. And as you can see, it measures seven times 10 to the sixth, which is well within our spec of 10 to the ninth. So this work surface would be considered good from a compliance verification measurement. And we will move on to the next one.